<coughs> Good start. Hello, my friends! Welcome back to the fourth Q&A session. Today, I will answer again your questions that you guys could ask me under my community tab posts. Today, I have no script or anything like I usually have. I'm just going to straight up answer your questions and I hope I'm not make too much blub. So, the first question is from Kakashi Verse. What is your main hero? Um, at least in this season, it's mainly 1-1 one, one and Ruby who I spammed in ranking. Um, otherwise, I played a lot Kadita, Harley, Saber, Tigreal, Jawhead. And I also used to main Badang, Uranus and... Halcord, actually. Yeah, Halcord, I forgot. Yeah, my fallen brother who they nerfed to death. Sad. Is tank build or damage build Karina better? Um, I think right now the damage build is actually better. Or a hybrid version, what you can build as well. That works pretty good on her. Uh, what mic do you use to record your voice? Uh, this is the... What is the name? Tonor Q7. No, no, Q9. Um, I put a link from Amazon in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, which is the best hero for the jungle? Go check out my tier list video what I just made. There, you can see it. Uh, which software do you use to edit your videos? Uh, it's called Shortcut. Um, it's actually, one thing what is good about it, first it's free, and secondly, um, it's pretty easy to use. Like, when I started to make videos, I had really no idea how to do it. Like, I never edited a video before unlo unless... When you count like the vid, uh, the Microsoft video editor with it, then I did, but that's not really a good video editor or not a proper video editor. So, yeah, it's pretty easy to learn. Um, what's the benefit of being allergic to peanuts? None. Like, you smell peanuts, you almost throw up, and you eat a peanut and you die. The next question is from Badass Anime Quotes. Now then let's see what you have for a quote. ML, can you analyze the pattern of Avori plays? Because he only uses Leo mod to reach elite rank to mythic without switching. With legit myth mythic IDs? I don't even know what my mythic IDs. What What is mythic IDs? I really don't know. Um, I never thought about making like analyzing other YouTubers what they're doing. But if you guys want that, let me know in the comments. The next question is a little cheat, because it's from my Patreon. They actually have like a cheat code where they can ask the questions and have a better chance to get chosen. So if you want, you can click the link down in the, in the description or up here. And you can also join it, if you want, of course. Uh, the question is from Myst. Not game-wise related, but it's more about yourself. Among all characters in ML, which describes you the best? I actually thought really, really long about it today and usually I think longer than I should. And in the end, I came out with Jawhead and Akai because Jawhead is like the daddy type. And since I'm a dad as well, that's kind of fitting. Also, my little girl loves the... What was the name from the little girl from Jawhead? I actually forgot it. But she just loves it from the collector skin. She loves the outfit from the little girl. She wanted to have the same as well. And another character that's describes me pretty good as Akai because as I read he's like pretty relaxed and laid-back guy but he also have like his dreams and he wants to um, he have some ambitions to become a warrior so and that pretty much describes me as well like most of the time I'm pretty relaxed but I, but I still have my ambitions like with my YouTube channel for example do you prefer the developers defining the meta or do you prefer the players I think it's kind of both um, I think it, it's good when the developers do it because usually they should know the game the best since they're developing it. But from my experience in the gaming industry, I know that many times it's not the case. Like, the developers are not actually playing the game. You know, this was really a big problem in the company where I was working that some developers really had absolutely no idea how the game works. Um, and I knew it because I was a tester. With this in mind, I think it would be good when there would be also like some pros included for the meta, like players who really, really know what's going on, what's good, which hero is overpowered, which hero is 
totally underperforming. I mean, technically, you can also see it like from the heroes ranking and what you have in the game. But um, I think it would be good if some pros would be included into in that process. About the video of the tier list, are you planning to make a video about it every patch or every once in a while? Um, I actually, this was actually my intention to make uh, a tier list video for each and every patch that is coming out. Because I don't think anyone, at least for the English speaking ML community, is really doing it like for really every patch. I know there's like from Evos, I think the coach who's releasing uh, tier list once in a while. And Assassin Dave did it before, I think. But I think that's pretty much it of people who made tier list videos. Correct me if I'm wrong, write it in the comments. The next question is from Zabila Ik Iqbal, I guess. Why do you eat peanuts? Because I'm allergic? Duh. <laughs> and second, I'm a decent player, but it's hard for me to decide when to rotate, to join team fights, and when to stay in my lane. When to play passive and how to play passive. Can you make a special video about it? Because I'm really struggling when playing MM. Um, I can actually announce something pretty cool for you guys because uh, with my Smurf account, I just solo queued up to Mythic and maybe I will make a little solo queue to Mythic series out of it, where I'm explaining you how you have to play each role. Something like this. The next question is from Ichigo Tenchu. What is the most simple thing that most MLBB players forget? Um, I think one thing that so many players forget that is that they have to push. Because you have it so many times that you have gank after gank after gank, but basically not only push, maybe you can also say objectives. Many players just forget, after you have a successful gank, take an objective. Like, it's not the time to go back to the jungle to farm or, go, for example, just rotate away from you from the lane where you just ganked you know when you successfully ganked a lane then push as far as you can together you know and this is really something many players forget they gank and just go back to their natural habits like clearing the jungle go back to the lane but it's not really the good thing what they should do they should focus on taking the objective another thing that many players forget is having fun with a game like don't take everything too seriously like you know you have a bad team yes of course it's annoying i can understand that totally i had that while i was ranking up to mythic many many times uh, that there were players where i was thinking like oh my god what are you doing mate but in the end it's just a game and sure i lost some games and okay then then i just play the next game and not get too angry Next, your wife will face reveal. Wife? She's not here. Sorry, guys. The next question is again a Patreon question from Twister J. Do you think Floin will be the next forgotten hero like Faramus? She's fair, fairly new. Okay. She's fairly new, but I see no one playing here at all and no patch notes on her. What are your thoughts? I think either she will be. It could happen, of course, that she's becoming a forgotten hero, but I would assume it will go down the route more like Fovius before. Like, when Fovius was released, he was played a bit. Then he was, like, completely crashing down. Nobody played him. He was, like, completely on the bottom of the hero's ranking. And then they actually... Then Muntan picked him up again, and then... And then at one point he was completely overpowered, and now still he's banned. Okay, since I'm playing 1-1 one -one in Ruby, I'm trying to get him banned anyway because he's he will be the worst nightmare for me, but he's still getting banned pretty often, so I think it will go maybe this way. That they buff her in and yeah, that then she's getting banned all the time as well. I think. We'll see. Next from Anonymous23 with six questions. Always, when you ask like so many questions, I will always try to make it as a quick fire. So when you have one question, I have the time that I can answer every this one question detailly. But when you make like six questions, then I will just try to go as quickly through as I can because uh, I don't want to spend like five minutes on one question. That would be a bit unfair to the other people as well who just ask one question. So just that you know. What to do? Contest turtle or push lane? Um... If possible, you should definitely try to get the turtle, you know? When the turtle is up, that's the time to get the turtle, you know? So, the turtle is up, that means the jungler goes there, the uh, mid laner and the roamer goes there, and 
if possible, also the side laner on the side where the turtle spawns should go there. That you're four people then that you can actually contest. It. That's not the time to push. Uh, the only one who should stay away from it is the is the guy completely on the other side of the map because it usually makes no sense to run that far around. Because if your counterpart is is staying on the lane, that counterpart can just push at least the first tower through, maybe even the second. Like you lost your complete lane like this. That makes no sense. Should I still jungle as a tank when nobody in my team wants to jungle? As a tank, only as a tank who is effective in the jungle, then it makes maybe sense. But like, I don't know, when you go like with Tigreal or Kufra, I don't know. I don't think they are made for being in the jungle show. So then you play without jungler. Actually, I had while I was ranking up some matches where we had no jungler. And it has a little bit of a benefit too, that on the lane, you're always one person more. So you can make it work even without a jungler. The only problem you will have later is, of course, when you con when you contest the Lord, you don't have retribution. Can we win by only pushing and farming and not going into team fights? Theoretically, yes, you can, but you usually cannot take your objective easily without any ganks. So technically, yes, you could. Definitely, you could win without a kill. When you just push all the time, you don't need to kill anybody. That works, but only theoretically. Uh, do you watch anime? If you do, what are the ones you like the most? Um, I actually wrote down a few uh, that I was watching because right now with my YouTube, with my family and everything, I actually don't have the time to also sit around and watch anime because yeah, I'm just, I just have no time. Like the, I think the only uh, series I was watching in the last half year was outside from kids movies with my daughter of course was squid game this was the only thing what i was watching with my wife on one weekend and that's basically it yeah but i watched all ghibli movies again with my daughter because she liked them really much and i liked them hurt them too so maybe one day i can watch anime together with her who knows <laughs> um otherwise the one thing i will stay up to date is, is attack on titan because i really love this one like the first season was like all right i was not like fully on the hype train back then but the seasons that follow afterwards they were really really good so when the new season for this is coming out this i will definitely uh follow uh otherwise what i was watching what i like is as you can no this way i have to go here when you know you know you guys know this guy this is uh ryuk from death note so yeah death note is one of my favorite zero note to kaima this is pretty old and I think like basically one of the first isekai animes that was out there before there was like the isekai genre. Um, Toradora I loved when I was younger, like when I was a teenager. Uh, ReZero I watched. Um, and I actually finished the whole Naruto uh, series. This was like a pretty long thing when I watched it. Is buying skin worth it? Well, if you like it, I like buying skins actually or having skins it's just makes it look nicer so if you have the money and you want to spend it on the game do it somehow the 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 developers must be paid as well you know so if no one would buy skins the game would be finished basically so yeah uh is having a title worth the flex um i think like of course when you have Okay, a title is nice. I like actually the title is like the second most important. I think the win rate is even more important than that. Um, on the other hand, if you want to flex, flex with a performance in this only game. Like, it's nice. Like, oh, you have a 90% win rate. But when you suck in that match, then you suck. Then the whole flex was for nothing. So you can flex after the match when you have gold medal and 20 to 0 kills. Then you can flex. Next, next, next. I'm going to speed up now a little bit. How old are you? 28. Uh, many people said I don't look like this. Many people said they expect me with a beard. I would love to have a beard actually, but it's not growing for me or just like little hairs like this. So I would look like a cat if I would just let it grow. So yeah. Uh, since when did you started to play ML and why? Uh, beginning of 2020 and my wife introduced me to it. When MLG Jr. will come, when she's old enough to play Mobile Legends, then I'm going to make sure that she's becoming uh, uh, eSport Pro, definitely. Hello, my friends! Will you do hero guides? 
it's actually not planned right now because with the Kadita guide I could actually see like yes there are definitely people who care about it there are people who would watch it but when you think about my general audience like all of you guys would every one of you care about the Sicilian guide about a Paquito guide about a now, Ruby Guide I made already, but let's say Argus Guide. Not really, I think. Not everybody cares about every hero. Even I don't care about every hero, like, you know. I have my certain heroes I like to play, and I wouldn't watch uh, Argus Guide, for example. You know, so I think for my channel, it doesn't really make that much sense. Um, and 100k subs, Nico Eat Peanut? Hell nah. Forget it. No way. There's no way this will happen. Forget it. Next, we have Kadai de Kito. What do you think about other MLBB YouTubers like Shimon, Hororo, Beto and others? The ones that you mentioned are actually pretty decent, like I like their content, like they all more or less uh, explain the game and the mechanics. They do it with more, how do you say it, like Shinman and Beto are doing more like an entertainment style of guide, so they're not just li like me, who's like 15 minutes straight up talking tips 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 um, They have like a more entertainment style with it, but they are still teaching the people other youtubers that I was watching at least is Elgin for example as I said before already uh, Especially for the patch notes because as I said, I'm actually too lazy to read so I really just I really like to have like it just visual in front of me so It's just nicer than just reading like a wall of text, you know um, who else can I recommend? DB Streams I can recommend. Like, it's a pretty small YouTuber like me as well, but he does actually pretty good content and he's mostly doing content for Sun and Argus, but if you care about anything regarding side lanes, uh, he's doing pretty good guides and I can really recommend watching him. The next one is from Testy EXPV. Is there any hero that can reach me to Mythic for carrying the team? Go watch my tier list video. Again, I can just say that. Next, we have Khalil Anur. Another question for you. Do you have the dream to become a pro player and join the national and international championship? Um, actually, like, not really. Like, to become really a pro, that would mean that I would have to play every day for hours and hours and hours and hours. Like, eight hours, ten hours. I have to make this my full-time job and I really just don't have the time for that. Like, of course, I could quit my job and try to become a pro player, but nah. And I think also to be like an eSport pro, I'm too old. <laughs> With 28 years old to become a pro, I think. Like, I'm okay on the level I'm now. Like, I think I'm a decent player, but I'm far away from being like an actual pro player. So, nah. Uh, what's your opinion if I want to main Vexana, Faramis, Terisla, Mincita, etc. and use them in rank? Um, if you like self-torture, do it. That's fine. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, it's it's fine when you use these heroes, you know? You can rank up with these heroes. It's not impossible to rank up with them. Uh, it's just more difficult with these heroes when you play against another player with the same skill level who's using an OP hero then you have a disadvantage. But if you're really good, you can basically rank up to Mythic with any uh, with any mage I wanted to say, but I meant hero. Yeah, with any uh, hero you can rank up basically when you're really good, so. Uh, do you have a Reddit submission? Uh, if you have one, I would like to join it. Um, nope, I don't have it. Um, and I also don't have the experience with Reddit. Like, I'm searching up some things. Sometimes when I make videos, you know, I I go around and check what's what what is being talked about in Reddit and stuff like this. But um, I actually have no experience how to create one. There it starts already and everything else. And I already have like my extra work with my Discord server, what is also sometimes a lot of work when something is going on there. So I don't think that will happen anytime soon. So sorry. The next question is a Patreon question again from Corbea. Recently, some tanks like Tigreal and Kufra were changed to tank slash support, and Bane became fighter and mage, while Yi and Shin uh, had his role swapped to assassin marksman. Are there any other heroes you think they could have a role adjustment? Um, 
The personal example is perhaps Popol could be like Marksman and Support, or even the other way around, Support Marksman. Um, I was going through through the hero list, and I actually didn't find that many heroes where I thought like, oh yeah, they could have a change. Um, on the Marksman, I thought like 1-1 one, one in Moskov could be probably Assassins, because from with both of them, uh, you can basically just camp in a bush and like surprise attack the enemy what is like the trademark of an assassin and especially with one one i'm always doing that i'm always hiding uh in a bush and try to ambush the enemy so that would that would fit them i think but as a second rule of course not as a main rule uh for i for valia i thought this could be a support role because you could also say with CC skills, you could like make Veil, Eudora maybe as support, but they are like more about dealing damage than supporting with their CC skills. But with Valir, I could think of that he could become a support. Um, and with Badang and Guinevere, they could actually become assassins as well, because it's the same. You camp in the bush and just jump on the enemy and try to burst them down. So again, assassins, as assassin traits. Next, we have Ikoma Ichiru. In which case should you contest the Lord? Uh, if you have enough heroes in your team that are up, um, or you have a hero that is good like at stealing the Lord, like let's say, who's good at stealing Lord? Frank or Sook, for example, like the easiest example, you know? Um, sure, you can contest the Lord, but for example, when the whole enemy team is up and there's only two of you and it's already in the late game, what means when you die, it, the respawn time will be like 50 seconds, don't contest that. Let them take the Lord, just stay in your base and death and wait for everyone to respawn like if you want to make a comeback like i said in another video already try to do it in the base that's a good chance um in which case should you backdoor um when the enemy for example is trying to push and many of your allies are up then one of you can try to backdoor because it forces the enemy to actually retreat that they cannot uh, force the push but that only works really well when you can trust your allies who are in the who are in the base like when you're playing solo queue I actually try to avoid it because can you really trust your teammates in solo queue eh, most of the time not so and when you try to backdoor and they all died then the game is over so only do it if you can trust your allies um, and also only do it with a hero who can actually push, like, I don't know, Sun, Zilong, for example, like, really, really strong pushers. Um, in which cases should one initiate a team fight? Um, as I said before, basically, when you want to take an objective, then, you know, when, for example, you rotate to the side lane, like, the jungler, the mid lane, and the Roma, they, they go to the side lane, Try to get, try to force a team fight there, um, kill the enemies, so then you can push the lane through as far as it's possible. Um, in which cases should you give up the Lord and push instead? Um, with give up the Lord, I think like you you mean like when you sh when the enemy when you wipe up the enemy or just one of them is still alive and. Um, you have the chance between either taking the Lord and pushing, I think, because when the enemy is taking the Lord, you should not push. That's not the time to push, definitely not. Um, but yeah, when you see the chance to finish the game, then you should push. Like when it's already late in the game, and let's say the enemy had the enemies still have like 20, 25, 30 seconds until they respawn, then you should push. Then you can ignore the Lord, just push straight through and try to finish the game. Yeah, basically that's it's always when you, when you see the chance to finish the game, then push. And the last question, how are you MLG? Well, it's already night here and actually I'm a little bit tired, but otherwise I'm pretty good right now. It's getting really cold here, like in the morning uh, when I got to my car, it was actually like the all the windows were frozen, so I had to scratch all the ice away. That's I hate when I have to do that. But yeah, it's winter. Next, we have Neon. Is ML your full-time job or you have other jobs? Well, as I said, with quitting my job, uh, I have a full-time job, actually. I'm working as a, a QA manager slash engineer. Um, right now, I'm uh, responsible in my company for 
automated test, what basically means um, I have a program and with this program I'm writing basically code that this program is able to make our tests automatically. So that when we have tests that we have to do again and again and again, like after every update a developer makes, uh, we basically have to test the same things over and over and over again. And when you test the same thing 500 times, then you're also getting blind for mistakes. So, And for that, you have the automation that you can basically say, I only have to press one button and the test we always have to run through again and again and again is basically made automatically, what saves us a lot of time, a lot of stress because testing the same thing over and over again, do something the same time 500 times in a row, then you will definitely hate it when it's all the time the same. Um, and yeah, this is just really, really making our life much, much easier. And it saves us a lot of time for other things we can test, like the newer stuff where we can focus on. So that's basically my job, what I'm doing. And uh, it's pretty cool. I have really much fun with it. Uh, it's from Anak B. Batman. Uh, if you would become an employee of Mouton, what would be the one thing you would change in Mobile Legends and why? Um, as I said already before, I answered something similar in another Q&A already. The matchmaking I would change. Um, because I think there are still room to improve. Like, as I said before, like... Uh, 40% of the matches are basically predetermined because either you have 20% complete noob team or the enemy is 20% complete noob and only the 60% of the matches are actually like really interesting and I would like to make it up to 90 like you have the same amount of noobs uh, in the same team you know so I'm not saying like we need to change it that you're not having noob teammates anymore but it should be like fair like you have two noobs the enemy have two noobs I know it's really difficult to make a perfect matchmaking, but yeah, this will be something that can be still improved. Um, and the emblem system, because I just find it useless to grind it. Like, you have to... I'm still, after almost two years, I still haven't leveled up all of my emblems in my main account, because maybe it's because I was too lazy to grind. Like, I'm not buying every chest I can all the time. But yeah, I think it's just too long, the grind. It's just unnecessary. Um, did Isoya inspire you to use Ruby? Um, I think actually it was Isoya. I think because of Isoya I was actually picking up Ruby again. Like, I played Ruby before. I actually made a guide about Ruby as well. Like, was my, I don't know, 7th, 8th video or something? Um, and yeah, I picked Ruby up again. And since Ruby became meta anyway, I, ju I was just playing her more and more and yeah, really successfully, actually. And it was really fun playing with Ruby. Um, what are your main heroes for each role? Already answered. Uh, do you think some of the buffs and nerfs of some heroes are pointless? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Uh, but I think it's just... You can't be... W with a balancing, you can't be always 100% perfect. It's really, really difficult to make, like... When you have over 100 heroes, to balance them really with every update perfectly... It's just really difficult. And even when, I mean, sometimes you had it, there was a hero you haven't touched in a while, but that one got completely OP because of other heroes that got nerfed, for example. So, yeah. Sometimes they are pointless, but yeah, you cannot be perfect with everything. For example, like the buff they made on Roger. I don't know if they've re reverted this already, but uh, when I saw this, I was really like, huh? Why are you buffing Roger? He's already one of the best heroes. Like, he don't need another buff, so... But yeah. Um, how can you adjust to your team composition if they pick bad heroes and to not fluster them? Yeah, how do you adjust? Have a good hero in each role, I guess. You know? T go to the tier list video, see who are the best heroes for each role, uh, pick out one of your favorites or one you think is interesting to play and learn that hero. Uh, having like a perfect team composition in solo queues anyway very difficult like that really works well in the higher mythic i think it starts like even in low mythic you don't have like the best teams and since i ranked up now from epic back to mythic one time i saw on legend like what are the team compositions there and it's really difficult to adjust to this so for that i would really say get 
get some heroes who are really good on their own. Um, and then you can switch in between them what just fits the situation the best. Um, why do you say hello, my friends, in the best way possible? Um, this is actually a phrase to be to get recognized, you know? So when I start every video with this, and this is basically this is basically one of the YouTube strategies to get into this like, okay, I have to then I have to talk a little bit more about that to explain that. So um, actually, when I started my YouTube channel, I was looking like the ways to how to improve, what can you do, how you can become successful on YouTube and stuff like this. Like, I think mostly everyone is doing on YouTube. And one of the things was, for example, to have phrases like hit your full combo on the like button, what I just introduced a few days ago and what I actually forgot in this video. So if you haven't done it already, use your full combo on the like button. And it's the same with hello, my friends. It's like the you start a video from me, any video, like at least the recent one in my first videos, I haven't done it, but I think in like almost in my last 30, 40 videos, I did it at least, I think. Um, it's always start with hello, my friends. So when you hear that, you directly recognize it with, ah, okay, it's that guy. I hear that already before this hello, my friends. This... And I also, yeah, I try to be really, really excited for this, like that it really sticks in your mind, you know? And even when you didn't notice from who that video was, like you just watch Random Guide, you just watch a tier list video, for example, many new viewers come in in a tier list video because uh, they just search it on YouTube, um, see the first time a video of me, and maybe they see then a second video of me, they hear that hello, my friends again, and they directly recognize, ah, I know that guy. I saw a video from that guy before. And when the, when these people like my videos, then maybe they subscribe, they stick around, they watch more of my videos. And that's basically the concept behind it. Like having like memorable phrases so people get to know who you are without even knowing like, oh, this is the Amble Guide channel, you know? By the way, another thing. Um, I was already talking about that before and I'm actually planning to make a second channel where I'm explaining like the secrets of YouTube and all of my experience that I've made so far. Like uh, there's really like a lot, a lot, a lot of work that got into like the success that I could have. Like, of course, on the one side, it's the videos. It's making good content, what you need to be quite successful to have many subscribers, to have views on your videos. But also, there's a lot going on in the background, what you have to think of. And it's more than just thumbnails. It's also, like, how to get recognized and all of this stuff. Like, if I would if I would guess how many hours I spent researching, I would say, especially in the beginning, I spent, like, three, four, five hundred hours researching how to get better on YouTube. I made a YouTube course, actually, what I paid for. Uh, what was 100% worth it, where I learned so much and still learn new things. Um, and yeah, I just generally want to share my knowledge to first all of you, but also to other people who want to start the YouTube. And I try to explain it as easy as I can, because sometimes with other channels who do something like this, it's like there's like the, the how, how do you call it in English? Like the the path is miss is basically missing. Like you have a video about this topic, this topic, this topic, but there's no channel what I found where it's like, okay, here you start and this is the whole journey you have to take to become successful. This is missing and this is basically where I want to go in. That was a lot of talking. And the last question is from Lista. How do we go to MML? I go... What the... What was that? Um, yeah, to be good in MML, watch the Ultimate Rank Up Guide series that is now here. There. There you can see it. Click on it. Do it now! And yeah, see you over there, I guess. <laughs>